We are live. It is the Applebyte Extra Crunchy Podcast from the Giant Bomb Podcast Studio in San Francisco, California. It's the Applebyte Extra Crunchy with your host, Mr. Brian Tong. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show, episode 76, Extra Crunchy, Oh So Munchy. Oh, yeah. I'm broadcasting from a secret cavern, a secret location somewhere in the Southern California area. Beecham, you're in the home base, the mothership. I'm in the Giant Bomb studio in San Francisco. And next week, actually, the week after we move back up to our regular studio, we cannot wait. Man, we have been in a makeshift situation for how long now? At least, what, six months? Uh, it feels like, feels like six months, yeah. But I think we're it's gonna been be like back. four or five, maybe. So people that have been watching, they haven't seen the full breadth of what we can do on this show. Yeah. We got graphics. Right. We got everything. Yeah, Phone calls. Yeah, everything crazy. So um, again, this is Apple Byte Extra Crunchy. It's the audio podcast, a complimentary piece to our weekly five-minute video show. Again, this show, though, is all about you all, latest news, kind of new updates since we've last shot the recent show. But call us. We get tons of calls, and we want you to be a part of it. The number is 1-800-616-2638. Tell us your name, where you're from, your comments, your good apples, your bad apples, or maybe help us out, help out the other viewers that are part of this show or listeners uh, to learn more. I, we always love it when you guys can either correct us or even tell us new things that we can give to the audience. So again, 1-800-616-2638. It's all about all y'all. So let's just jump into it. First things first, the new... 10.5 inch iPad that has been rumored over and over. Uh, it is expected to be announced at an Apple event in early April. Uh, we have seen in the past Apple events around the kind of that March time frame, but this new report is that we will see it sometime early in April. That's according to our friends at Digitimes. Uh, in addition to that, this 10.5 inch iPad will be roughly the same size as the 9.7 inch iPad. What makes it different is that it's going to gain that 0.8 inches of size, of length, <laughs> of the screen. Why are you laughing, Beach? Length matters. That matters. It matters. Size matters. Size matters, baby. It'll be around the same form factor, but you'll get 0.8 inches of screen size additional because the bezels are expected to be pushed all the way out to the sides, um, making it a larger screen, but around the same form factor, which is nice. The reports also say that we will see updates to the 9.7-inch iPad, uh, the current 9.7-inch iPad Pro, and the 12.9-inch iPad Pro. My baby, my favorite one, the 12.9. But again, these updates most likely won't be big, massive changes. All indications point to that. At least the 9.7-inch iPad Pro will just be a minor upgrade over the current model. So we're talking about a 10X, the A10X chip in the 9.7-inch iPad Pro. It'll give it a speed boost, a performance boost, but there might that that might be all. Also, if we're talking about the 12.9 inch, it better get a true tone display. That's what I want. But Tim Cook in the earnings report outright said Apple is not working on anything like a hybrid OS. He said he feels that the iPad is different than the Mac than the Mac line, and that although the iPad Pro line will do more, he still thinks that the Mac line will do a lot more. Therefore, everyone that is hoping for a hybrid OS, like I'm hoping for anything that gives us some level of surface like functionality and integration, yeah. we're not going to see it. So That's a bummer, man. it's just not going to be as feature rich. It's going to be iOS still on a tablet. And I can tell you right now that it still feels super limited. They got to do something quick because my kids, they hate my MacBook. Like they're like, Ooh, I don't like it. I can't touch the screen. They don't like Dang. it. So, I mean like the iPad, Oh, we love the iPad. They just use the iPad all day. When it comes to my MacBook, they're like, I want your other computer, daddy, because they don't like the MacBook. So that's something that Apple needs to think about, you know? <laughs> I, I just think in their DNA, what they've shown us is that they don't want to do that. They aren't willing to do that. And so I, to me, with, if they can't do that, it feels like the iPad line specifically has almost reached a point where it can only do so much now if you're not going to update the OS. There's no full o OS on it or even a hybrid OS, and it's it's going to limit what it can do. For someone like me, I mean, I'm a specific use case. I, I'm not going to say everyone should go out and buy a 12.9-inch iPad, but if you love reading comics and you want to drop that cheddar, it's worth it. Drop the cheddar. <laughs> drop the cheddar. I, you know what? If you want to read comics on an iPad Pro, 
you can get a refurbished like entry level one for like 649 bucks. Just wait till the new ones come out. The first gen will be way cheaper, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like you've got a full tablet that where magazines really look true to size. Comics look great. Uh, you know, I mean, if if I was a smart person, I probably would have waited, but Game, I got to get my comics on. Games look really great too. I mean, there's a lot of awesome games on the iPad. But um, when you were talking about the new updates to the to the next iPad, it was just kind of like bigger size, slightly tiny bit bigger, and a better chip. That doesn't seem like a big selling point. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, true yeah. tone though. TT TT display. TT. You want you you want TDs on your uh, on your iPad Pro? <laughs> yeah, totally. I'll take that. So again, we'll see what happens. But for people that are saying, "Oh, Apple will eventually catch up," I'm just the Surface Pro product has been out. I feel like for at least three years now. Oh yeah, maybe yeah. even four years. Totally. And it's gone to a point where now, as the industry has evolved, it can do so much more. But it's like the iPad feels like it's in the in like in the past. Honestly, it just really totally. does. Yeah, yeah. It feels like feels like dated. it's stuck in the past. Yeah. And so you know, I've got my boy on Periscope. Wow, Monty saying iOS will catch up. Well, if there was any time to catch up, this would be the year. But again, Tim Cook said not and that's gonna ha- not gonna happen. So we'll see. Uh, if you want to align when Apple's going to actually do this keynote, early April is the indication. If you look at Apple's headquarters, they also have that Steve Jobs theater, that really nice amphitheater. It's still not even close to being done. So my hunch is if they do any type of announcement, it'll be in their. Um, I know they're, they want to say, they said the last keynote was uh, their last one in that auditorium. So maybe they're just going to speed, what is it, like fast track the new Steve Jobs auditorium to get done in time so they can do this iPad announcement there. We'll see. We'll see. That would be cool, so, man. But the April, sometime around deal. April. I know. It's, it's, it, it used to be a bigger deal, but, you know, <laughs> we'll see about that. Okay, so we've talked about iPads. Also, in more iPad news, according to Fisku Analytics, they they basically can pull internet traffic data and see what activity is happening, what's going on. They were able to identify four new iPads that were spotted in their analytics, likely to be the new iPad Pro devices that Apple is currently testing. Uh, when Apple has the devices, their model identifiers associated with it, Fisku saw iPad 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, and 7.4. The current iPad line identifiers start as iPad 6. So clearly they're testing these. Fisco says they picked up about 40 devices that are being used with these new identifiers. This is about the same number of devices they've seen typically about a month before Apple launches a new product. So that aligns as well with some sort of an April release. The other aspect that I found kind of interesting, but it obviously makes sense, is that these new iPads that were found or discovered were not only running iOS 10.3. Some of them are running iOS 11. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, sneaky, sneaky, huh, Beachy? Cool. So, again, everything's lining up that we'll see these in April, but that's just a little a little bit of more meat for y'all to chew on about the iPads. Uh, also, Apple continues to roll out their iOS and Mac OS betas, the seventh beta for both iOS 10.3 and uh, Stephen, I'm just gonna let you say the seventh beta for our our next guy. Who who is he? Marcos Sierra. Marcos Sierra. Ten point twelve point four. The seventh betas of both of those have released uh, to developers. Again, the big feature in ten point three is find my AirPods. Cool. Also getting a, like a podcast app widget. Um, at least in the Marcos ten point twelve point four beta, the big new feature, at least that will be coming out, is Night Shift finally coming to the Mac. And uh, just on a random side note, I like when people tweet me that they were talking to Apple support and they actually call Mac OS, like they outwardly accidentally call it Mac OS. I think we've done our <laughs> job. I think we've really done our job. Yeah, good job, man. <laughs> good job, man. Uh, Beach, did you get a chance to see this recent Apple commercial This called Sticker Fight? I haven't, actually. I, I saw something scrolling past, but I didn't go to click on it. It didn't look too interesting. But is that so, an, an AR thing, like an augment, augmented reality thing? No, it's just that it's so. I'm gonna have you pull it up. Um, it's this link that I put in the show. It's there's it's a video that's just touting their stickers uh, feature <laughs> in messages. So it, they just kind of like. On. Go, well, <laughs> We're excited about stickers. No, I'm just telling you. There's something. There's a nugget in there. Okay, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get to something. So, 
if you can play the video for people that are I'm, watching, I'm playing it. About 20 seconds in, there's a scene where there's a guy who slaps a caterpillar on like some waffles. Okay. Okay. Now, when we get to that, or whether you time jump it, I'm gonna tell people there it is right there. to look oh. at it. Okay. So if you Everyone pause it, it, if you somehow pause it on that scene where the waffles are. If you look to the left of the waffles, oh, there's a phone. There's a phone, but look at it very carefully. I want you to tell me, Beach, what color do you think that phone is? It's like a matte white. Right? Doesn't that look white? Yeah, it's like a matte white color, and it has like a weird camera lens on it too that that's, I haven't that's, seen. That's an iPhone Seven Pro. Like to me, sorry, plus. <laughs> my, my brain my brain's all over the place that's an iphone 7 plus that is white if you look at the lens that's a dual lens and everyone's like oh maybe it's a silver one and it's um it's a reflection if you look at the top of that image there's a knife on that shot yes that's that's what silver looks like oh totally okay? yeah so the phone to me without a doubt that is a white phone i can't and even if it was a current iphone 7 that was silver like people are saying oh it might be the the edges of it, the corners typically have these antenna lines, and it also so, kind of has that iPhone four look, which it does, which goes along with the rumors that have been like it's going to look more like an iPhone four. It's kind of square, you know. So I'm just saying, good, 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 people, uh, good observations here, Brian. Jeez, I'm just, I could I'm just <laughs> starting. I'm honestly I'm just starting up a rumor. Okay, that that's all we're really trying to do. This is we're pretty just, amazing. I have to screenshot this for the. Uh, <laughs> for our headline our our promotional image i'm just saying is that the is that the white iphone who knows That's but funny. uh take a look at that i will if you guys and gals listening can check it out uh take a look at it and let us know what you think all right let's let's talk sponsor 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 guess who's running the show whether you're a busy professional couple a large family that runs at a breakneck pace or someone who simply wants to start cooking more Check it out. HelloFresh makes it easier, tastier, and healthier than ever to enjoy the experience of cooking new recipes and eating together at home. From creating the recipes and planning the meals to grocery shopping and even delivering all the pre-measured ingredients, trust me, it makes it easy. HelloFresh delivers right to your door so you can skip the trip. HelloFresh currently offers customers a classic box, a veggie box, or a family box. Customers can order three, four, or five different meals per week designed for either two or four people. New recipes are created every week. Now, uh, HelloFresh is HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that makes cooking fun, easy, and convenient. Each week, HelloFresh, HelloFresh creates new <laughs> delicious recipes with step-by-step -step instructions designed to take around 30 minutes for everyone from novices to seasoned home cooks short on time. So you just throw it in the oven, 30 minutes later, you're ready to eat dinner. So HelloFresh yes. Hello Fresh sources the freshest ingredients measured to the exact quantities needed so there's no food waste. So check this out. A long time ago, HelloFresh actually sponsored our show, right? And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to check it out. Like I literally last night, I could walk you to my refrigerator <laughs> right now. Like I have two recipes that me and my lady, we cooked up. Um, it was uh, like a zucchini chicken parmesan chicken. Does that sound that good to you? That sounds bomb. And then the Is other one right was here? like, I think there was a picture of it on the website. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> this could, could be, be it. That looks good. It could be. But it, you know, I yeah. like to, I like to cook. It's fun. It's kind of like a social thing. So I did it. I'm, I actually subscribed to the service now. So not only did they sponsor our show, I'm a paying member. Like they didn't pay. They're not giving this to me for free. Like BTZ is paying for this. Yeah. You're giving so. the money right back. I am totally. <laughs> they sponsored the show. It's completely making this negative now. All right, so check this out. For $35 off your first week of deliveries, visit HelloFresh.com and enter APPLE, the word APPLE, all caps, when you subscribe. Check it out. It's going to be good. Nice. So HelloFresh, like I said, I cooked that up with my lady. It was good. It was tasty. Do it. And also, thanks for sponsoring the show. Yeah, thank you, HelloFresh. <laughs> right. thank, thank you, Hello. What Didn't we make up, like, slogans for them, like, HelloFresh is hella fresh. <laughs> they should do that. HelloFresh is hella fresh. That makes so much that's, sense. That's right? It's Come perfect. On. Yeah. Just sign us, sign us up already. Yeah. The, whole, the whole Bay Area would just react to that and just go buy HelloFresh. <laughs> it's a total <laughs> Bay thing. Total, total Bay, Bay, Bay. All right, back to the show. For you guys ready for this? First signs of the next gen Apple TV running TV OS 11 purportedly 
appears in developers' logs. This is according to the co-founder of Fury Games. They have an iOS and tvOS gaming company, but they saw that an iOS or sorry, a tvOS 11 device carrying the identifier Apple TV 6.2 appeared in their usage logs. The current Apple TV identifier is 5.3, so obviously this is some sort of new hardware. The, the IP address that this came from was within close proximity to Apple headquarters. Obviously, Apple has not released any information about a new Apple TV yet, but Bloomberg had reported earlier that a 4K model could come as early as this year. A 4K model that should have happened <laughs> last, last year. <laughs> totally. A model that should have allowed us to stream or toss our 4K video from our phone to our TV set, like yes. at least. Like, oh, let's promote a 4K phone on your iPhone, but you can't watch it anywhere except on your phone. <laughs> like, dude, come on, Apple. Like that, to me, that was a no-brainer. But hey, uh, a year and a half later, that's cool. So either way, um, the 4K Apple TV that we're expecting to possibly see this year um, looks like at least new hardware for it has been spotted in the wild, and uh, we'll see how that all shakes out as well. Do you do you have a current Apple TV? I don't. I have a Roku and a Chromecast. So uh, I, I would I would be down with Apple TV. Well, I want to I want people to call in and let us know. Really, you know, I think the Apple TV product is an interesting one from a standpoint is it just hasn't delivered enough. Like if you're in the ecosystem, you're all good. But for our listeners, Apple Byte Nation. If you guys and gals can call us, let's talk about it. 1-800-616-2638. What is it really that you want to see from the Apple TV? Is it is it actually just 4K? I, I think that they should remove the requirement to all games that are on the Apple TV have to work with the standard Apple remote. All right, that's a requirement. So that instantly limits the type of games that are being developed for it. Wow, that's a bummer. Like, that's kind of, that's kind of lame. And then... The biggest letdown, right? No TV streaming service that should have been exclusive to the Apple TV. That's not happening either. But what is it that you wish or want the Apple TV to do that would actually make you buy it if you haven't already? And then if everyone says, yeah, I already bought it. Okay, fine. Well, then that that, just, <laughs> that kills the whole conversation, right? Yeah. So Apple TV, talk to us. Let's, let's, let's hear what you got to say. We're going to jump over to the AirPods. And I thought this was actually really cool. Pretty interesting stuff coming out from the Apple camp. If you go check out Patently Apple, <clears throat> Apple has been granted patents for an earbud design with biometric features, including um, improved noise cancellation. So we know the first gen AirPods, uh, I think super convenient, love how they work wirelessly. They have little to no functionality unless you use your phone to control them. But if you don't care about how they look on you and if they actually fit your ear, I think you're gonna love it. And I would say most people that have AirPods really like them what do you think about that beach have you i think that's awesome i i definitely want a pair but like i said before like they're just too expensive you know and if there's more functionality that's great um they do kind of look silly but that's fine i'll probably <laughs> get over it um but you know a lot of people have been calling us also saying that we forget about the apple watch you can control the airpods with your apple watch too uh, i mean or control your phone and what what's playing and stuff like that so we got a lot of calls about that yeah, I mean, um, I guess I forget about that because my Apple Watch is, like, never charged. Like, look, my <laughs> Apple Watch, I, I haven't charged it for, I don't know how long because it's more of a Yeah, but I piece. mean, the, you know, a lot of people called us and were like, you didn't mention the Apple Watch, but a lot of people don't own it, and that's just another thing you have to buy to control your AirPods, to control your phone. So Yeah, you know, like, who's going to do that? Yeah, so I just want to acknowledge that people were talking about that, but um, I would love to have some sort of wireless earbuds because I'm tethered to my computer at, and my desk, and it's a pain in the ass, you know. So something tells me you're gonna get AirPods Generation Two. Something if just they're tells cheaper, me if they're under a hundred dollars, possibly. But if Ooh, they're like I, still like one sixty, one even like one twenty is too expensive. I feel. Does, I mean, <laughs> does Apple really sell a product under a hundred dollars other than a headphone or a cable adapter no. that's like thirty or forty <laughs> bucks? They don't. No. Nah. Good so point. check this. <laughs> So check this out. Um, if we talk about the, some of these <coughs> patents that make it interesting, one of the first patents shows uh, how a, follow along with me, photoplethysmogram or PPG. This is a sensor that could be added to an earbud um, that can track your biometrics. So for example, there's this part of your ear called the tragus. It's this front side of your, like kind of closer to your cheekbone. And if you touch it, it's that kind of little meaty part. I'm going to do a little human anatomy here right now. 
That's your tragus right there, okay? <laughs> so what the patent would show is that this sensor would be close to like the exterior surface of the earbud. And most of the problems with the earbuds is that it doesn't make contact with an area that could, that is deep enough, right? You don't want to put, sure, there's earbuds that go deep into your ear, but that's not what everyone wants. So their idea is to put the sensor that allows it at least on the surface to touch the tragus. Uh -huh. And that would allow you to collect some of that biometric data. Like so it could be sort things, of biometric data, like, uh, like heartbeat, heartbeat and heart stuff rate. like that? Yeah, heart rate, you know, oh. uh, uh. heart rate, uh, EKG, temperature. Oh, my. it'd be like, oh, your, your ears are hot. <laughs> how how are your ears? <laughs> so that's one of the, that's one of the patents to put that sensor in that location right against your tragus. I learned that today and I'm going to teach you tragus. <laughs> what, what is that, Beecham? It's pretty good. It's a little the thing in between your ear, that little thing that holds your ear pods in. Let me, let me see, let me see. Can you show us your tragus right sure, now? Sure, sure. 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 Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Bing, 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 bing. Ding, ding, ding. What do I win? Good job. I don't know. You win respect. That's cool. Um, also, another patent here, we talk about the noise cancellation. Uh, they're saying that they could arrange three microphones in a triangular configuration to improve the noise cancellation features for the um, AirPods we know that they don't have any noise cancellation whatsoever. So these are two patents specifically to the AirPods or at least to earbuds, but come on, let's be honest. These are gonna be implemented hopefully into AirPods, but like all patents, it doesn't mean that they're actually gonna do it, but it's what they're thinking. They need to bring more features to the AirPods, that's all I'm saying. But I do think it's a pretty badass first gen product. I was, yeah. I was lukewarm on them. I still have to diss them for their functionality, but they are very convenient. Like they're a really good product. They're not a great product, but they're really, really, really good. They're just like almost there. That's so for people that say I hate on Apple, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. And hate, people hate that love, haven't, love. It, yeah, love hate, love hate, love hate. People that haven't used them are the ones that criticize them the most. I'm like, have you ever tried them? They're like, no. I'm like, get out of here. If they do, they if they sound anything like, you know, like regular AirPods, ear pods, then I'm I'm happy. Because those sound, sound great. Much just like them. They sound, they just, sound like just like them. them. Yeah, because they sound great. Like I have no yeah. complaints with the quality. They sound just like them. All right. Um. Let's. We're not going to bore you too much, but let's just fill through some real quick hits of iPhone rumors and whatnot. Uh. Because come on, we always have to talk about the iPhone eight six months ahead of time. According to the Nikkei Asian Review. They're reporting how Apple's plans to implement their rumored curved OLED display on the new iPhone. This is literally the report. Uh, the cur display curves will be gentler than Samsung <laughs> and, and offer no new functions. So, so gentler means like a little less, not as severe, <laughs> right? Is that what that means? Exactly. That, that, that's all you got. Gentler, gentler curves on <laughs> Apple's display. Um, they, all, they also did say there will be no new functionality. So some of the past Samsung products... On, like on the Samsung Edge, S7 Edge, you could actually, you know, um, there was some functionality that you could use to access contacts and things of that nature um, or shortcuts. There, there's going to be no functionality on the curved edge as well. They, they just wanted to make that clear to us. Oh, so, I see. Okay. Yeah. And then another follow-up, because Apple is ramped up for these new iPhones and the big talk is about how they're going to be using OLED screens. Apple is estimated to grab 14% of OLED panel production in 2017, specifically for the iPhone 8. Where does that rank? Obviously, they have their orders directly lined up with Samsung. While Apple will be making 15% of the total annual OLED production, Samsung will get about 56% of that, and then you'll have other manufacturers. Again, to remind you, the only OLED screen that we're expecting to see is in this kind of premium iPhone 8 potential 5.8-inch phone, while the other two will stay with their standard sizes and stick with that um, with LCD-based screens. Cool. 14% seems like a small number. It is. there. You know what, what it comes down to is there's not too many OLED screen producers. Um, that's probably the biggest limiting factor. You have all these other companies that might want to jump on the bandwagon you know, to do more OLED stuff, but they can't because even although Apple's locked up, I think something like 75 million uh, OLED displays, at least for this year, they have a future contracts which total 160 million OLED panels directly through Samsung. Wow. So they're they're jumping all in. Um, and it just I'm just curious to see 
how many, if they're really only putting this OLED screen on a 5.8 inch iPhone, I think a lot of people are just going to end up buying it because it's the, even though I don't want a 5.8 inch phone, I don't want one. It's too big. It's uncomfortable. But if it's the iPhone that has all the, all the bells and whistles, I'm going to do it. You got to do it. You're Brian Tong. You got to, got to have the up. latest, you got to have the latest Apple stuff. But I didn't buy an iPhone 7 Plus. I didn't. <laughs> I refused. Well, well, that's. I cool. let other people do their bokeh, bokeh effect. Cool, cool. Um, this one's actually really good. Apple Care Plus can now be purchased up to one year after buying an iPhone. So for a lot of you, every time you buy an iPhone, they're like, "Oh, would you like to buy Apple Care?" And then they, you say, "No, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to pay an extra hundred bucks." I actually, quite honestly, buy Apple Care on everything I get, just because it's helped me out. I do too. And, and then when I need to go into service, I'm gonna like. Look at my history. I've always purchased Apple Care, so they've kind of done a few things for me that maybe they normally wouldn't. It's probably also because I slipped them a twenty dollar bill, but um, <laughs> no, I didn't. But here you go. Before uh, sixty days was the window of time you could buy Apple Care that extended your coverage for um, a phone, but now you can do it up to a year. This is only to the phone right now. Uh, things like the iPad, iPod Touch, and Apple Watch, you still can only purchase it within sixty days to get that extended coverage. Um, but which would I, extends the coverage to two years total, but is yeah. this, is this something you can buy online? Like you can yeah, buy you Apple can. care online. So like, so technically you can break your iPhone like day five yeah. of owning it and then be yeah. like, Oh shit, I better go buy Apple care real quick online, go buy yeah, Apple I, care and then take it and get it fixed. Yes. Okay. Exactly. But I think if I recall right, when you know when you do any type of swap out for a phone or a screen repair, there are fees associated with it. Oh, like, true, true. I know there was like a something like a thirty dollar fee or so when yeah, you yeah. break your screen. Yeah. Um, but even if like let's say your phone uh, just got like nuked or something, I think it's you don't to replace the phone. It's something like I don't know, like around a hundred or one hundred fifty dollars to do any other type of damage replacement. Mm-hmm. So. And then Most software the, stuff, they usually just do that for free, like any software issues. Or... Well, te- yes, they should, but technically you only have like 90 days of complimentary support and a limited and a limited one-year warranty. Gotcha. Like it's not a full, it's not full coverage. So Apple Care, for the most part, basically gives you full coverage. And again, you will still pay some fees to get them something serviced, but it's not like you have to replace the whole phone. Gotcha. But again, nothing on, does not... The extension is only applied, the one year extension only applies to the iPhone, not the iPod Touch, not the iPad or Apple Watch stuff. So, hmm. 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 Got it. Okay. Let's wrap this bad boy up. Uh, <laughs> kind of like in a final story here Apple One. Uh, did you see this article at all? No, I'm looking at it now, though. It looks fun. So, an Apple One is going up for auction in May. This original, the OG Apple One, right? This is. Wozniak and Steve Jobs. It's really the product that started the company. Um, it's going to be placed up for auction by a German auctioneer. It is an actual functioning Apple One. It has all the manuals. It has the original receipts. It's wow. it's not so. And there's only supposedly, allegedly, in the world, only eight of these that actually work. Right? You'll have ones that are all beat up that were in like someone's corner of their garage. This is like. This is like the dude who bought it and has bought every computer and saved every computer in the original packaging <laughs> in hopes to get rich, right? That's awesome. This dude is going to get rich. This so is it's like the equivalent, to fetch over. This is almost the equivalent of like Edison's first telephone, right? <laughs> I feel like no, it is honestly, really. Yeah, or like no, no, uh, no, no. the Wright no. Brothers first uh, airplane. <laughs> I swear to God, this is the equivalent of that. Dude, that's that's funny. Let, let's let's get even more extreme. Let's get even more extreme. <laughs> Seriously, this, this is like, like the first car by Henry Ford. It, yeah, I'm. It, you're not kidding. This is like a I'm, paradigm shift happening right here. Pretty so, amazing. <laughs> it's expected to fetch over three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Wow. So I hope I hope to God it just goes straight to like a museum somewhere. You know what I mean? Like it shouldn't be like some private collector's house. It needs to be oh. on display. I feel. But. It could be on – maybe it's a rich person who buys it to put it on display and brag that they have it. You know how there's people like that? <laughs> I hate that. Like basically rich guys who brag that they're even more rich. That's... They have like a priceless work of art in their house <laughs> where only like two people looking at it every day or something. <laughs> yeah. Here, so let me give you a little perspective <laughs> before we wrap up. Uh, last year, a rare Apple One celebration model. So think of like kind of a limited version of this 
fetched eight hundred fifteen hundred thousand dollars in an auction. Wow. Uh, Two thousand fourteen working Apple One was auctioned for three hundred sixty five thousand dollars, and then one signed by Wozniak wow. went for six hundred seventy one thousand dollars. That's pretty awesome. That's that's pretty wild. So there you go. If you got the cash, if you want to be that rich dude who shows off in the museum, go buy it. Hell yeah. All right. Should we uh, get to our phone calls? Let's do it. We got uh, lots again, of phone calls. Yeah, again, if you guys want to be a, be a part of the show, the phone number to call is 1-800-616-2638. Oh, I got some music playing. Let me stop that. Okay, here we go, guys. First call. Uh, yes, this is uh, Nick from Alameda again. Hey, I just want to let you guys know that there is another option to the uh, Home Run HD, and that's the, uh, the Tableau, which runs about the same in cost. But the cool thing about the Tableau is it does have DVR function. What you do is you plug in any old hard drive that you may have lying around your house, plug it into the, uh, the Tableau unit, and it streams to all your devices and to your main television via an Apple TV app. And also, I go with DirecTV Now because DirecTV Now has app sign-in for a whole bunch of kids' shows, Disney Junior, uh, Disney XD, nice. stuff like that. So it's worth looking into DirecTV Now and Tableau, both connected via Apple TV. Cool. Love that. So uh, I don't. I think the only thing that Nick didn't clarify is uh, – if he was signing into Disney shows for himself. Yeah, that's that, that was my first question was like No, no, no. no, no. A... I mean, I think I wanted to know is <laughs> does he have kids or not? That that's what I <laughs> If he's watching all the Disney content. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm trying to get at. Is he watching uh, Mickey's Roadster Racers by himself at Dude, home? I don't or... even know if, I don't even know that show exists, bro. <laughs> what is that? It's Mickey's Roadster Racers. They drive roadsters and race. I mean, you don't know you don't know about that show? So you're saying it does exactly what the title of the show exactly, says. Exactly, exactly, yeah. No, yeah. but Nick, thank you so much. That's awesome. I love that he called. Uh, and he's not the only one that called and was like, yo, bro, Tableau. Yeah, we had a bunch of them, actually. A bunch of people, Tableau, check it out. So I I did not get the Tableau product, but I do like the fact that you can just plug in a hard drive directly to it. I know that with the Home Run HD, uh, they are getting DVR functionality, but you would have to um, connect the hard drive as like a NAT storage but it sounds like with Tableau, you can just connect it directly to the unit. Um, and then I looked online and I saw that the Tableau has two tuners for their $200 price point. But if you want four tuners, so four people could be watching programming at different time, different channels at the same time, it's a $300. So it's a pretty cool thing. So thank you, uh, everyone that called, because that's what's all about, educating us, educating our other listeners. So I'm down with that. I'm going to check this out because I'm still, <laughs> I'm all, still shopping, you know? You're all bro, still shopping Tableau. to cut the cord, man. Yeah. Cool. Okay, next call. Uh, let me get to it. Here we go. Yeah, hey, guys. This is Nate Culler from Dubai and the uh, United Arab Emirates. I've uh, got a quick question for you, Jim, about uh, the next, or the, yeah, I guess the next 802.11 uh, Wi-Fi standard. AD, what's the likelihood of us seeing that in the next-gen iPhone? Good work. Bye. So here's, here's what I think about 802.11 AD. I think the biggest thing about it, um, if you guys – read up on it, it does have faster bandwidth throughput. So you can get gigs of data shot through AD, but the, the biggest obstacle about it is it's a really short short distance. So it's not like you could be across your house and get AD speeds. Like we even know with 802.11c, you can be, I think if I'm right, shoot, I, I someone's gonna beat me up for this. I think it's around, is it like a 20 to 30 foot like straight sight to really get those higher, faster speeds? Um, even when you're going through walls, it it's just not going to be as effective. Well, AD, although it gives you those faster speeds, it's a real short range access point. So it's almost like you would need to have it in your living room and be within like five to ten feet of it. Quite honestly, it's not going to be something that can be used can be widely uh, used everywhere. So I think that's going to be the biggest limitation of it. We for Apple to implement that, I think Apple has always been slower to adopt standards until they really become a thing although if you rewind apple brought wireless internet before anyone was really pushing it that hard with the original airport base station that looked like that cool silver ufo oh yeah really pushed wireless internet um before it was even a thing so but i just 
based on reading the limitations of AD, I don't. It just doesn't seem like something that Apple would be like. All right, we've got to put AD in here. The other thing is right. Not only that, you have to wait for everyone to jump on the standard with more routers. It's just not very prevalent right now. So my hunch is that we would not see it in the next iPhone. I could be wrong, but just knowing how Apple thinks and how they have behaved historically, I, I don't expect it. But maybe, maybe, maybe not. Cool. Yeah, I remember the, the first wireless device I ever used was a Mac. It was like a real old school MacBook or something in like the early 2000s. I was like, what? This is on the internet. It's not connected mm-hmm. to anything. So it's pretty mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, okay, let's go to the next call. Uh, here we go. Hey, I was just wondering if you can answer this one question. Do you think Apple's desire to corner every bit of the market has eclipsed the desire to actually innovate? Like right now, Apple is just basically catching up with Android, and they really aren't uh, creating their own or expanding their own ecosystem like they used to. They're just trying to attract the same customer base. Any opinions on this? Thank you. We got we got a smart we got a smart caller right there, okay? Yeah. Young Buck who's like, um, Apple's not innovating. What are they doing? Now, I would say this. Apple's Apple's most innovative product last year, quite honestly, were the AirPods. Definitely. The W one chip was their most innovative product. And I think that the W one chip itself um is going to be able to do a lot of things moving forward. I know it's not like a computer. I know it's not like an actual uh new device. And I don't necessarily think we need new devices all the time but that that was that is one of their kind of innovative tent poles of 2016 although it feels like wait that's all you got and yeah fine that's all they got but if you look at how apple's operating now their customer base is so large it was all about trapping i i will use the word trap slash keeping people in their ecosystem there's a lot of us including myself that when faced with certain decisions, you choose to buy an Apple product knowing that it works with the ecosystem of everything else you buy. True. And that's its biggest hold. Everyone was talking about the iPhone. What what was what's the thing that kept most people in the iPhone world, even when they wanted to look at Android? The ecosystem, the fact that the apps typically come out first. Sure, it's ease of use, but you know, it's tossing content from there to your um Apple TV, blah, 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 all those little bells and whistles you get just by being in an ecosystem, that makes a difference. So they've kind of rested on those laurels. They've built a huge base. If you look at the iPhone adoption rate, it's maybe iPhones aren't selling as much as they used to, you know, when you talk about a new iPhone. But I I think the iPhone 8 will be, you know, and it, it has happened over the past two years. Each new iPhone model has still been, the the top selling number of iPhone units that they've done. And yeah. I don't think it's going to slow down anytime soon. They sure. keep on hitting record iPhone sales numbers. Um, when I say that it's slowed down different quarters, it's um, it isn't as big as it used to be because yes, the market is maturing. But if you look at the overall total of phones being sold over the life of the product, there will be more iPhone eight sold than any other one. So um, as a business person, they're, they kind of, they're innovating, but a lot slower because they have the market. And that's sometimes what happens to the big, big machines. Yeah. You definitely want to keep your fan base happy. Definitely. I I mean, I just want, I, I think, I think what it is is they could do so much more, but they're, they're so spread thin now. They have too many products. I just don't think they know what they're, I don't think they have enough focus to be like, let's make this great product. Instead, it's like, oh, we'll have some guys here. We'll have some guys on the Apple Watch. Oh, yeah, we got this Apple TV there. Uh, we got some guys on the Mac. Oh, yeah, we took everyone off the Mac Pro team. That's why you haven't seen it in three-plus years. Like, there's they're doing too many things now. We have three models of the iPhone coming out. We have three models of the iPad coming out. I mean, come on. Yeah. Come on. And uh, there were stories similar to what you're saying about, like, the Apple car. Like, we had a big team in Germany working on the Apple car, and then all of a sudden that's not happening. So, yeah, it's – quickly changing now we have a big, big group of people working on augmented reality glasses for apple you know so who knows where they're going man yeah so it remains to be seen and i think that sometimes what people mix up is that being innovative doesn't always mean you have to sell the most units of something so for example uh i think the surface pro is the best hybrid product out there it doesn't sell the most but it doesn't that doesn't mean it's not innovative. Look at that. Remember that Microsoft Surface Studio, that that basically that touchscreen oh, yeah, yeah. iMac that yeah. turns into an art tablet? Look, I don't even know anyone who has that yet. Yeah. But as a proof of concept, first gen, just wait till gen two, gen three. 
I think more people are going to buy it. Is it going to outsell the iMac? Probably not. Probably. But it is it is the most innovative desktop we've seen in a long time. Yeah. You know, I so. do have like pro video people like asking me like advice for, you know, what should I do for editing and what should I do for a computer? And I'd say iMac and Premiere, you know, it's like still <laughs> yeah. iMac has a, the, probably the best screen you could get. And, you know, so you can still say that they're b- building stuff for pro people, you know. Um, we have one more call. All right. Hey, Brian. Hey, Stephen. This is Jack from Rancho, Illinois. I was just calling um, a couple of days ago. I had a issue with my iPhone where it froze up whenever I powered it off and I powered it back on and it froze on the Apple logo. So I had to take it in to Simply Mac, which is a Apple uh, retail specialist. And they had to pretty much restart my iPhone as as if it was a new iPhone. Thankfully, I had all my stuff backed up to iCloud, so I didn't lose any of my information, really. I just had to go and reinstall all my apps and stuff. But I think Apple deserves a very rotten, bad Apple for not fixing this issue. And hopefully they do fix it. Thanks. Love the show. Bye. We got someone to throw it up. But here's the question, Beach. Like, he was able to get all his apps and stuff back on it, right? Yeah. Just sounds like a big pain in the ass, though. It is a pain in the ass, but man, it would have been a real bad apple if he couldn't even get that back. So Yeah, if he lost everything. <laughs> then I'd be like, ooh. <laughs> All right. So I think that's going to do it for this week, man. That's it. Damn. We're done. We're, are, I don't, are we going to be in the new studio? Maybe the week after next week. Yeah, the week after. Yeah, ne- we next got... week, we still have one more week in the dungeon, and then uh, then we're back. All right. I like that. Okay, again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, remember, you guys can call us 1-800-616-2638. Thanks so much for hanging out, listening to us. That's going to wrap it up for this week. Be safe, be good to your friends and family, and to your strangers. For Mr. Beecham and myself, we'll see you next week. Peace!